Greetings, friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sarsavelich, and this is Bible News Prophecy Program. Most Christians in this world do misunderstand the book of Daniel and the writings of that prophet. Daniel was a well-known prophet of God who lived during the reigns of King Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, Darius, and Cyrus. Some observe a memorial to the death of the prophet Daniel on July 21st of each year, while the Greeks tend to pick December the 17th as the date of his death. Now, the book of Daniel starts with, uh, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. That the king instructed Ach, Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, processing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And then, you know, uh, the account continues. And then it tells us that uh, Daniel and his three friends were indeed one of those good-looking and uh, wise young people. This is all described in Daniel chapter 1, verses 1 through 20. And of course, Daniel and his companions refused to eat at king's table, but they were actually relying on what Daniel would be preparing for food. You see, Daniel and his companions could have been killed for refusing a diet that likely contained unclean meats, unclean animals, yet he and his companions had enough faith to resist. Now later, Daniel is shown to be one who could even interpret dreams and who are received, uh, who, who, uh, who also received some of his own dreams anyway. So his interpretation of King's dreams, it's well known and it's recorded in Daniel chapter 2, verse 36. This is the dream, Daniel says, now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength and glory. And wherever, wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he will give them into your hand and has made you ruler over all of them. You are this head of gold. And then he describes, of course, the succession of the world kingdoms from the Babylonian kingdom all the way to the Roman Empire. Now, this interpretation of King's dream is recorded in Daniel chapter 2, verse 36 through 45. Now, certain Christian Church of God groups have misinterpreted part of this dream, and they believe that the toasts in verses 41 through 43 must refer to 10 currently existing 21st century nations. And they believe that those will be the nations, of course, on the European continent. However, this is not the case. And uh, this mistake that they have will mean that when the final beast power forms, if he has more than 10 or perhaps 11 currently existing nations, that those who rely on the misinterpretation will not realize that the Great Tribulation will begin until it is too late. You see, Daniel recorded and wrote about the famous handwriting on the wall. And uh, that handwriting of the wall is recorded in, uh, that would be in Daniel chapter uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through 30. And uh, I'll just quote verse 25 for now. And this is the inscription that has written, that was written, Mene Mene Tekelub Harsin. Verse 25, verse 26, this is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Peres, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And then, verse 29, then Belshazzar gave the command and they clothed Daniel with purple and put a chain of gold around his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. So these were the last uh, verses in chapter 5, and I just read verse 25 through 30. Now most in the United States of America, and most in the Anglo-Saxon descended nations, they uh, simply do not understand, they do not see the handwriting on the wall for their societies. 
Yet, although most in the churches of God tend to misunderstand other parts of Daniel, they also do not see the handwriting on the wall that will affect them. Notice what will happen to real Christians in the time of the end according to the book of Daniel. And this is a quote from chapter 7, verse 23 to 25. Thus he said, the fourth beast, the Roman Empire, of which the resurrection we are seeing right now, it's being formed into a mighty European super state. So uh, a fourth kingdom of earth, which shall be different from all other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, trample it and break it in pieces. The ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones, and shall subdue three kings." He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and half a time. You see, dear friends, persecution is coming and most in the churches of God do not realize how the various persecutions will affect them. Here is a section in Daniel that many misunderstand. This is Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27. And this is the crucial and the key uh, uh, section in the Bible that sadly uh, the whole world and including many Christians in the churches of God and other churches of this world do not understand. Verse 26, Daniel 9. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. And till the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then, verse 27, he shall confirm a covenant with many of for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one who makes desolate even until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Now those who do understand this properly will have the opportunity to know, prior to the start of the Great Tribulation, approximately when it will begin. Those that claim that the prince to come in Daniel 9.26 is Jesus Christ, and that Jesus is the one that confirms a covenant with many for one week, etc., they will not understand as that statement is not a reference to Jesus. The prince to come, friends, is the final European king of the north, or the final European president, or if you want to call him even better, the final European dictator indeed. He is the one in Daniel 11 verse 31, who fulfills bringing the end of the sacrifice and offerings, three and a half years, the middle of a seven-year prophetic week, And he will bring an end to those offerings and sacrifices after the deal is confirmed. Jesus did not destroy the city nor sanctuary, nor is there a biblical record that he confirmed a seven-year covenant. Now those who refuse to accept that they are in error, and there are various churches of God that are in error about this, they will not understand certain end-time events. And along with them, the rest of the world will not understand them either. Uh, In Daniel chapter 11, let's pick up in verse 27. Uh, Both these kings' hearts shall be bent on evil, and they shall speak lies at the same table, but it shall not prosper, for the end will still be at the appointed time. While returning to his land with great riches, his heart shall be moved against the holy covenant, so he shall do damage and return to his own land. Verse 29. At the point in time, at the point in time, he shall return and go toward the south, but it shall not be like the former or the latter. For ships for Cyprus shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved and return in rage against the holy covenant and do damage. So he shall return and show regard for those who forsake the holy covenant. And forces shall be mastered by him, and they shall defile the sanctuary fortress, and they shall shall take away the daily sacrifices and place there the abomination of desolation. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall corrupt with flattery, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. And those of the people who understand shall instruct many, yet for many days they shall fall by sword and flame, by captivity and plundering. Now, when they fall, they will receive little help, But many shall join with them by intrigue. 
and some of those who understand of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white until the end, until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. And then the king shall do according to his own will, he shall exalt and magnify himself above every god, shall speak blasphemies against the gods of gods, and shall prosper till the wrath has been accomplished, for what has been determined shall be done. And then from verse 37 onward to verse 40, uh, 45, uh, it describes, of course, his uh, war adventures or his war undertakings and how he's going to uh, flood the, the, the attack the king of the south, which will be the, the, the leader of the Arab world, most likely Egypt. And he is going to be to overthrow the glorious land, enter into the glorious, glorious land, etc., etc. So this is section eleven, chapter uh, chapter eleven of Daniel, and section twenty nine through forty five. Now the problem is, nearly all Church of God groups either do not understand this, or they have a significant, at least one error, but they have significant errors in their understanding of parts of this, including the persecution it is referring to. You know, and uh, we can quote you here various uh, various uh, examples of how they misunderstand these things. You see, because Jesus referred to uh, Daniel eleven in his Olivet prophecy in Matthew twenty four fifteen, those who do not properly understand the sequence and players involved in Daniel eleven will not possibly know when the great tribulation will begin until it is too late. Daniel was told. In Daniel 12, verse 4, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And in these, brethren, we see that happening, you know. Knowledge has increased, and many are traveling uh, back and forth, and uh, the, 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 the whole society and civilization has been changed by such advancement. Uh, so truly, with jet aircraft, automobiles, trains, etc., many are going to and fro. But what about knowledge increase? You will notice that uh, the NAS NCA will soon be able to collect 966 exabytes a year, the total of internet traffic annually. Former Google head Eric Schmidt once argued that the entire amount of knowledge from the beginning of humankind until 2003 amount to only 5 exabytes. Now this is from uh, uh, the article uh, written by Lowenstein. And the, the title of the article is The Ultimate Goal of the NSA is Total Population Control. This was published in The Guardian on July 10th, 2014, and we are in 2022. So despite more information being available, many will not understand because, you know, in the end, the spiritually wise, the remnant of the Philadelphians will understand. Daniel 12, verse 8. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My God... My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white, refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise will understand. You see, friends, parts of Daniel's message have been at least partially fulfilled, and the fulfillment of other parts will come to pass, and indeed, we are going to be witnesses of all of that. However... The problem is, and the sad thing is, that many, including those in nearly all churches of God, will not understand key aspects of Daniel chapter 2, chapter 7, chapter 9, chapter 11, and chapter 12. We here, the Continuum of Church of God, we have compiled a list of 38 prophetic misunderstandings that the Laodicean churches have in, 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 in their circles. And uh, we have many of those misunderstandings that we have compiled. Many of those misunderstandings are related to the book of Daniel. Those who misunderstand the sequence and various particulars of the prophecies in the book of Daniel will not know when the great tribulation will come. And uh, hence, they will likely be killed or otherwise greatly affected by it. My name is Alexander Sasevedic. This was Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye, friends.